Hello everyone! Welcome back for more Let's Play Battletech. Joining me is JK Lantern. I, I feel like I smell dogs. Well, at least hounds. It's interesting that he's acting like the Kel Hounds are legendary. Because at this point, they did a couple of big things, but they weren't like... Eventually, the Kelhounds become one of the most famous mercenary units in the Inner Sphere. They're not there yet. Also, there are other things going on, but I'm curious to see. So would you say that we are, at this point in time, are we more notable than the Kelhounds? As of 3025, we technically have more mechs than the Kelhounds. Because they got reduced to a battalion size during this time period. They have like 36 mechs and some tanks. We we have and, that many assault mechs. Yeah, yeah we do. Um and I'm going to go into why that happened, but first I want to see what Morgan Kell has to say to us, because he shouldn't be in this end of space. Hey, he got us some double heat sinks before, so... Bet it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to see how they justify this. I haven't seen the Flashpoint pop up yet. The last one out of the batch. It didn't pop up on our flight out here. Hmm. That I saw. So, Morgan Kell is actually a Steiner nobleman, in addition to being a mercenary unit, mercenary leader. He is a baron from the planet of Ark Royal, and in fact, he becomes Duke of Ark Royal. But he was the first cousin of the Duke of Donegal, uh, Arthur Leuven, who, who married Katrina Steiner, who is the Archon of the Lyran Commonwealth. Um, and in fact, um, because they went on crazy adventures before Katrina became Archon of the Lyran Commonwealth. Um, Katrina, Katrina Steiner's second act in office was to basically hand Morgan Kell a sheet of paper that says, Deny this man, Morgan Kell, nothing. Signed, Archon Katrina Steiner. So, um, he's very much a, he's very much devoted to the Lyran state, despite being a mercenary commander. Hmm. Um, al also, what the hell are you doing out here, Morgan? You're supposed to be on Zanaya 3 in a monastery. Yeah, well, you know, get out and stretch his legs. Yeah, see? <laughs> Again, it's cutting off your argument here. Yep, yeah, no, like, because it's such a big piece of the lore, like, one of the novels starts off with him in the monastery. And here so, we so are, how... orbiting a lifeless hunk of rock in the periphery. We're bringing up Megan Kell, are we? Apparently. Nice. So, so um, re remember how we met uh, Justin Allard earlier? Mm-hmm. Megan Kell winds up as his sister-in-law. <laughs> huh. Um, 
Yeah, somewhere down the line, several years after this, Megan Kell actually marries Justin's brother, Dan Allard, who is one of the Kellhounds. Basically, Morgan Kell and Katrina Steiner and Patrick Kell and Arthur Leuven all played Pirate in the Periphery for a couple of years as a way to keep Katrina Steiner alive. And during that, they found... They found the fax machines, among other things. <laughs> and Morgan met this woman, Tempest. I think they're finally publishing actual canon stories talking about that. Before that point, it had just been one of those things that was kind of alluded to. Like, oh yeah, he has this other daughter and grandkids. We don't know where they came from. But this is something he would act, he would absolutely leave the monastery from. He basically went into the monastery because he was convinced that he and his rival Yorinaga Karita were like the biggest threats to the inner sphere. But but his kid's in trouble, and he takes that personally. And who is Tempest, anyway? A, a pirate. I don't know much more about. You know what? Just, just to see if they've updated that, because I know Stackpole has started writing short stories about that. Tempest. That's not what... Mother... I forgot that was also the name of a mech. Tempest Kel? Yeah, there is not much information about hmm. Tempest at the moment. We, we just know she's like a periphery pirate who Morgan Kel fell in love with. And then when he went back to uh, House Steiner, he had to leave her. He, he would have been, like, 20 when that happened, and he's, like, 45 now, so it's it's been a bit. Yeah. Of course there's a complication. The thing is, it's not going to be the Kellhounds. Or it shouldn't be. So, their big threat is a modified stalker that's a missile boat. I wouldn't know anything about those. Neither would I. I do know that if you pack enough LRMs on it, you can't get much for close-up support, so if you can rush the thing... Yeah, Morgan would absolutely not be around here with the hats at this point, because, um... Like, he left the Hounds, and he had them disband down to a battalion. What the Hounds that remained didn't know was he essentially sent the rest of the Hounds to go out and recruit and train people. Hmm. But uh, at this point, like, there is some bad blood between the remaining Hounds and Morgan Kell. Granted, um, once Patrick Kell dies, because he gets killed by Yorinaga Karita, um, Dan Allard basically goes to Zanai and is like, your brother is dead, also Yorinaga's back. And so Morgan comes back and gives the recall order to uh, the rest of the hounds that he had sent off. And basically he's like, we're going to war with Yorinaga. We're going to war with Yorinaga Karita and this Genyosha unit he made up. So, think you can potato another stalker? I think I can potato a stalker. Good. It's gonna be... <laughs> that would be a, one hell of an anticlimax. Oh my god, they have this badass stalker and this bad... Oh wait! 
Steak fries took care of it. Yep. And this is a airless planet, so heat levels are going to be a thing. Command interface initiated. So what else are they going to have there? That's my question. How do you think a stalker is going to hold up against five UAC fives? Asking for a friend. The friend is me. <laughs> <laughs> so if we take structure damage, we're not going to be able to get it fixed. Okay. Let's see, the units are over there. The main thing is here, and the reinforcements are going to be here. So it's not just a stalker. Okay. Okay. Also, we have, like, I don't see any wind or anything like that, so we're going to be, uh... Yeah, we're, we're going to be kind of with no cover. Yeah, we're... This rock's looking a little naked to me. It's a little bit. Sometimes you can find, like, windstorms uh -huh. or, like, dust clouds or something like that. But I'm not really seeing anything along like those lines. Be careful, Commander. You don't want to get caught in a crossfire. I mean, maybe this counts as scrub for cover, but I don't think so. Oh, good. Let's see, they're up there. I guess it's going to depend what I run into, huh? Let's see, a quick draw, a 55, and a 60. Oh no, a quick draw. I am afraid. Well, unfortunately, they're going to get the first shots on us. Damn it. Affirmative. Yeah, they're gonna get free shots on us, probably. One of them's a Wolverine. So having them take the first salvo against the Annihilator is not a bad thing. Ready for orders. You know? I mean, Roger I don't want that. to lose structure on it, but if anything's going to soak up fire, that's the optimal thing. That is a tanky, tanky bastard. So, a dragon, huh? Unfortunately, that dragon is turned a little bit. All right. Just as well, if you had me potato that dragon, I would never hear the end of it from Star. You Both potatoed Wolverine dead. instead. Okay. I I shot Hugh Jackman. Waiting for orders. Welp. <laughs> I wish I had more cover, but I don't. Take this. There's more where that came from. Hell, that stalker's getting the shoot at us. Ready for orders. We need to clear these things out relatively quickly. Moving out. Copy that.
for a second there, it looked like it was actually going to take it out because it was piling pretty good into the center torso there. It was. Um, I'm surprised it's still standing, honestly, but... Uh... Yeah, that's hurt pretty badly. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yes, it was. That lucky that shot on the head. That wasn't a potato. That was a steak dinner. That that was that was good. I like that. And then we get a forty-ton mech coming up the back here. What can I do for you? Please be a Vulcan. Please be a Vulcan. Please be a Vulcan. You betcha. It's a cicada. Close enough. Let's murder this some bitch. I said Is there a Warhammer back there I didn't see? War Warhammer tracks are what just got fired at us, yeah. Two PPCs, I mean, you got a few options there, but Warhammer would seem to be the most logical. Yeah, because if, if it was a... If it was a Marauder, I'd expect the AC-5 to be thrown into the mix. And if it was a Shrek, there would be three of them involved. Ditto for the awesome. Nope, they've got three more mechs out there somewhere. And we are going to need to bleed off some heat, so hopefully it takes a round or two for people to find Standing us. By. Move order received. Because completely air, you know, having no atmosphere whatsoever does not make things easier. A 41 yeah, um, ton mech, huh? Waiting for orders. You really need to bleed off. Waiting heat. on you, Commander. So do you. Resting my mech. I'm gonna have you two pause for a second. Hunkering down. They got better range. They got better uh, sight than I do. Huh. Will you please? That was very rude. Well, it's their stalker. What do you expect? So a 60 and a 45 are out there. Okay. Law. Orders. Roger that. <clears throat> it's a Vindicator and a Rifleman. Oh! Okay. I keep forgetting that that configuration of the Rifleman's a thing. Two PPCs and two large Sorry. lasers. <laughs> I'm Still made out it's of... not going to be a thing for much longer. Still made out of crepe paper. I don't fear the Vindicator. Enemy mech destroyed. That was almost <laughs> comical in how it fell. Yeah. They have two mechs left in this reinforcements. Yes, Commander. I hear ya. So far, only one of them is on radar. Nah, let's just shoot it normally. Ah, uh, the Avenging Angel. Time to die. 
It's Yang's favorite mech, canonically, apparently. <clears throat> apparently. And a 65 tonner with some with some missiles. Catapult. Bet and catapult. Oh, easy on the armor, buddy. Standing by. Heading out. Nope, not enough hit the head. Good to go. On my way. Yep, catapult. C4 catapult. Okay. critical hit. Okay, so I don't expect this to work twice. But if it does, it'll be really fun. Yes, it will. Engaging multiple targets. Okay. It didn't take off an arm. Yep. about armor being low on an annihilator is you're still talking about more armor that's on most medium mechs at least this version of the annihilator yeah. a lot of the canon versions of the annihilator a little thin skinned um not all of them mind you but a lot of them got it one It's a nice grouping. Mm -hmm. Critical hit. At least from what looked it looked like a pretty nice grouping from up here. Okay, you are about to fall over. What's up, boss? We still can't punch you with it yet. You are still out of range to get hit. Here it comes. Kill confirmed, Commander. Oh no, I fall down. All right, it's missile boat v missile boat. Well, hmm. they kind of outfitted it like mine. They technically have more weapons than you do. Technically. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see what sacrifices they had to make to do that. Armor? Probably. No, I'm looking at it. It is armor. Okay. I have well, 1480 versus their 1237. So I think that works out to about two and a half more tons of armor. Two-ish, yeah, that would make sense. Because I think we worked it out every hundred points is about a ton and a quarter. It should, it should realistically by the tabletop games only be two, but... Uh... Yeah, 
It must be running hot. It only fired one rack at us. Waiting for orders. Granted, so is so is this. This is running fairly hot. Yeah. Good to go. This is running really hot. I I'm trying to fry myself because my name's Steak Fries. Let's see, can I even fire the UAC-5? Yes, I can. If that worked, I was going to laugh my ass off. You and me both. But I wasn't exactly counting on it to work. Yeah. Okay, I feel like, I think in this upcoming mission, I'm going to have something to talk about. Okay. I think. And, yep, no structure damage. The Burton did get a lot of its right side shot at quite a bit by missiles. It was close to losing, it was close to taking leg and torso damage. Yeah. Yeah, my head armor got halfway down. That's where the that's where the warning came from. Let's see. Nothing amazing. No, no double heat sinks. A leg mod that gives us, lets us take less death from above damage. I still haven't even used death from above. Yeah, and there's a reason for that. I'm not that desperate yet. Yeah. Guess I'll take a piece of that catapult home. <laughs> 